Okay, so in ZBrush, we can also paint our model. So I'm on the eyes at the moment. In the last workshop, I changed it to this toy color. So what I'm gonna do to be able to paint is I can still use all the same brushes, but I'm gonna go into what's called RGB in here. Now I'm also going to turn off Z add. Now the reason I'm turning Z add off or Z sub if it's on is because these add or they take away from the model as I just want to paint and I don't want to actually deform the model in any way I'm going to make sure I turn both of these off now I am just using RGB which means I'm painting so let's go and choose our eyes I'll just turn this one off so you know and I'd like to put a little bit of black in this little recess so I'm going to use a standard brush that's B S and then V on your keyboard, or sorry, S on the keyboard. Uh, B, S, and then V on the T on the keyboard. Sorry. So uh, we've got that. So I'm going to choose a black down here. And now we're going to go down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is fill it with a material that's kind of off white. So I'm going to go in here and just choose a little kind of yellowy off white color like this. Now, because I've got RGB turned on, just RGB turned on, and nothing else, right? You can leave paint with alpha on. I'm going to leave this as this, so I've just got RGB on. I'm now, instead of filling with a material, I'm filling with a color, and I'm filling with this color that I've picked in my picker. So I'm going to go to color and fill object, and you're going to see this will change color. So now I'm going to go down to a black down here, and using the little brush here make sure it's on RGB only not Z add or Z sub and I'm just going to paint a little bit of black inside here so I'm just going to move this and begin to paint this black in here so that's not quite right so I'm going to use another little tool here I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use drag dot and we're going to put this in here and I can just move it. Notice drag dot allows you to move it. Now there's a little bit too much um, feathering between this and this. So I'm going to press the control and Z to go back and I'm going to change my focal shift so it's a lot sharper. So I'm going to bring this down a bit. I'm going to put this in here and I've got drag dot turned on. So there it's in there. Now it's going a little bit weird around the outside because there isn't many subdivision levels. So I'm just going to add a few more subdivision levels. I'm going to come into the geometry and I'm going to click divide. And that should give us a much better drag dot now. I'm going to make this a little, I'm going to change the focal shift a little bit and make this size a little bit bigger. Now I can drag this dot and I can put it into the middle here and release. And now I've got nice bit of black in the eyes. So now if I change this, it's not going to change anything. All right, so that's how we can paint the eyes really quick. So we can fill it with a base color, set a material and set it there. So I'm now going to turn this on. You can see he's got his little eyes. So what I want to do with the, this model is if I go and change any of these, you're going to see that what will happen is the model will change. I'm going to change it into here. I'm going to go to a basic material and we're going to just apply this material to here. So I'm going to go to material and I want to apply this material to here. So I'm going to go to color. I'm going to go to fill object. Okay. Now I'm going to apply a base color to this. So I'm going to choose a kind of basic green something like that now i'm going to go to rgb make sure you're on rgb and we're going to fill with color so we're going to fill this so notice it's all gone green now so we filled it up so what we can do now is i'm going to change this back to freehand and we can start to paint our model up now you can use symmetry on this as well or turn symmetry off if you want to and we're going to start to just color this up so you can have a real lot of fun with this we're just on rgb so let me just show you what will happen if i had z add-on so i'm going to turn z add-on and i'm going to change this color to a lighter color and i'm going to put the intensity up a bit just so you can see so now i am got z add-on so the brush is active and i've got rgb on so this color here will be painted and it's going to change the geometry so let's do that 
So you can see I've actually altered the geometry there because I've got Z add on. So make sure that you've got Z add turned off and then you can just paint the model as you like. Now remember when you do paint the model, that transition there between here and here is controlled by that focal shift. So if it's set on zero, you're going to have a really sharp pattern. But if it's set on something like that, it's going to be a real soft fade off. So be careful about that as well. So we can also say the intensity of it as well. So you can turn that um, intensity slider. It won't work for that, but you can change the RGB intensity. So this is quite a good way to build up your color. Notice it's not being applied straight away. So you can just build the color up slowly. I tend to put it on to about 60 or 63. That works for me. So what I'm going to do now is I can just come into here and I can just start to because I've got symmetry turned on, I can just start to build up the color. I'm putting black into the nose area inside there. Can you see that? I'm also gonna maybe come around here and just put black into where the mouth area is. Okay, you can see that in there. And okay, we've got symmetry turned on. And I'm gonna go into the ears and just put a little bit of black in the ears there. Can you see that? And we can carry on working through this. So I might wanna have that a little bit softer in there for the ears and I might want to build it up so I'm going to put that, that intensity down and just kind of build up that intensity do you see how I'm building it up by just drawing over it like that and you can slowly start to work over your whole model so for those horn areas there maybe I want to change it into more of a kind of um, color of kind of bone type thing so i can start to put that in there so again i've only got this in here i'm going to change i'm actually going to put this on about 83 or something and then i can start to paint it so we're actually what's called poly painting our model and the however dense the mesh is and when i mean density of the mesh i mean how many subdivisions you you put in there depends on the quality so if i was to um, paint on something that hasn't got many subdivision levels so let me just bring this down let me go to geometry and bring it down here if i was to have it on this the quality wouldn't be very good because there's not many subdivision levels if i paint on here you can see it's not really very good and if i then bring that up to here you're going to see it's not the best so it having a lot of detail on the model will give you a better poly poly paint on this and we can also use masking on this guys as well so if you want to come in here and you want to hold that control key you can mask around so I can mask around here so what could be a good idea is to come in here and mask around this model like this and then something like that okay and then you could mask this one we can even polygroup these so I'm just masking these bits out and uh, this is just a little bit of an extra part of this tutorial for you. We're going to go around there and I'm going to do this little this little horn across here as well. Yeah. So I'm going to press the control and alt key to take away. If you add a bit too much you can take away. And we're going to paint around here as well. Okay, so I'm not painting, I'm actually just masking, holding that control key around there. And we can go into this area like that. Okay, I've got a little bit around the head there, so I want to get rid of that. Might need to make the brush a little bit smaller. And take anything away from around there. Okay, but now I've done those little horns. Just make sure you've done it all. Double check. And now we've masked those. What you can do is you can invert the mask. So if I press the control key and I click once, I've inverted. So now I've got that color over here that I've picked. I can go into color. Remember I've got RGB on and I can go to color and fill object. And notice they instantly filled up. Now what I could also do is I could actually just polygroup these because I've got masking on this model and by the way guys to see it without the painting on it you can just click this one here so I can actually polygroup this because I've got the whole model masked control click you've got all those masks I can turn them into a polygroup 
So because they're masked, I'm going to go into where I've got the polygroups here, and I'm going to group masked. So now I've actually grouped them. So it's really easy now for me to isolate parts of the model. I can just press the control shift and click on here. And now I've just got these that I can work on. So this can be really quite good for you to use because you're now I can choose something like a white here and I can just now start to just sort of tip over the top of these models. So I've got, I'm on white inside here. I've got all that turned on. I'm going to change this size. I'm going to bring the brush size down a bit here. And let's just fill these. Color, fill object. I'm going to go to the white. And now I can start to paint white on the top to give a kind of real dinosaur type look. Remember, I've only hidden the actual green part of the model. So I'm actually just going in and painting this round here and making it look a bit better. Do the same that side, just check it all over. I've missed a little bit of the poly group there, but for this tutorial, it's fine. You know, it's just for you to get the idea of what we're trying to achieve. Okay, click this. I'm just gonna come in here and just alter that. And there we go, now we've got some lovely horns that have got a little bit of shading on them. Remember you can still, you know, if I wanted to now, it's still easy for me to mask. I could press the control, the control shift, click here, mask all of this. Control shift, click once, control, click once. And now I've, I've kept the masking. So now I can draw on this and I can swap between the masking by pressing control and clicking. And now I can, I can paint this, but not the, uh, thing because they're masked so it's a real quick way of you being able to um, change these things so what I want to do now is I'm going to do some freehand for freehand painting for the little um, horn that we've got here and the little toenails and I'm going to run through this so I'm just going to paint that on there like that I'm not you know spend time doing this guys you shouldn't be rushing this stuff but for a tutorial this is all I need to show you okay so you got in there then I'm going to choose a white for the very tip and I can start to put that in there and that looks nice and so straight away we're starting to paint this model and it's looking more like a dragon so now what I need you to do is I want you to do the same for things like the claws so you can mask it off polygroup it and then paint it all up so then you can play around with this until you get really good effect. So remember that masking technique because we've got these poly groups in here. It's really easy for us to press Control Shift, mask those by Control dragging, and Control Shift click, and then invert that if I want to by pressing the Control click, Control click. So I'm holding the Control, clicking once, I'm inverting that mask, which means that I can isolate areas and I can also paint them and protect them at the same time. So to get rid of the mask guys, you hold the control key and you just drag. All right, so I want you to go and do the fingernails, the little claws and the little um, teeth in there as well. So make up some sort of sculpt and just play around with painting it. And you can get, uh, depending on how creative you are, you can get really, really technical with some of this stuff, you know. So have a play around with this. And uh, I'm just going to just pause the video whilst I paint it. It takes quite a while to paint all these little bits in. Um, I'll show you what I've done for my little model. But that's the basics of painting your model inside of ZBrush. So there we uh, have a little uh, quick paint over here. So you can see uh, really nice, really quick effects that you can get these um, and make them look really good. And you can do a ton of other things with this, but this is just the basics, just to show you how to kind of poly paint and model up. So you can see you can get these really good effects. Now, if I wanted to change the material on this, remember I can still do that. If I turn RGB off and I just turn material on, I can go, I can check different materials by going to flat color and then making sure that this is on 100 as well. So I'm just in M and I'm just gonna go to color and I'm gonna fill object. 
So it's going to change to this matte color. Now, if I put it into a different color now, I can, in you know, a different material, I can see how it looks on different materials. So I've still got the ability to change this up and see if it's looking any better. Maybe I'll go to something like a soft plastic um, that we have down here. And that looks quite nice in there. And you can check that it looks good. And if you like it, you can apply that material. So I'm going to put it back into basic material. And then I'm just going to fill it with that as well. So I'm going to fill it with that material. So now we have potty painted this and we're ready for the next stage. Now remember that this model here is a low resolution model. And it means that we can actually now create what's called a UV map for this and export it out so we can use it with other applications if we want to. So you can see that we set up some poly groups there for these parts. Uh, we can set up more poly more, more parts for this, poly groups for this, and of course then export it out as well. So that is how we can poly paint a model inside of ZBrush and get some quite good results and you can do some amazing things with this you just need to spend a bit of time but you can see how quickly we've created this little dragon and actually painted it up didn't take long at all and of course you know you can spend as much time as you want making it look even better than this